Hello, everybody, and welcome to this fun little episode all about this wonderful little pepper, the jalapeno. Now, one of my favorite ways to eat it is going to be pickled on top of nachos. And let me just set a little scene for you. It's the night of the big game. You've made yourself a big plate of nachos. You're settling in and your partner turns to you and says, hmm, wouldn't it be great if there were some probiotics in those jalapenos? Confused, you look at the ingredients, you look at the nutritional facts, nothing. And sadly, friends, that's because there are no probiotics in these pickled jalapenos. But that's exactly what we're gonna do here today. We're gonna make fermented jalapenos. Now, if you're new to fermentation, this is a great recipe to get you started. It's actually quite simple. We're going to need a glass mason jar. This one here is about three cups, uh, but you can use any size. We have some salt. I also have a glass fermentation weight. This is not essential, but if you would like to pick up some, I have a link in the description below. Um, you're also gonna need about, a, this is about a pound of jalapenos and some water. So the first step is we're actually going to slice up the jalapeno and we wanna cut it very similar to our friendly pickled jalapenos that we have back here. So just go ahead and, and cut through pretty much in, in quarter inch or maybe a little bit less slices. Once it's all sliced, I went ahead and I put it in our fermentation vessel for these guys and you can see it's pretty pretty full, so we don't want it that full. We're just gonna kind of take a wooden spoon or something and push it down. I was thinking that in this time where we're not supposed to be touching our faces, uh, it's great to have peppers on your hands because you don't wanna to touch your face when you've been dealing with peppers, especially very hot peppers. Next step is we're gonna make our salt brine. And to do that, I have two cups of water and one tablespoon of salt. If you want to be really particular, you can actually weigh out your water. We're looking for about a two, two and a half percent salt brine here. So you could, you could go down that rabbit hole if you want to be super particular or two cups and one tablespoon. So we're just going to dump it in, grab a fork, and we're just going to kind of dissolve the salt in this mixture. Okay, so now we have it all mixed and we have our salt brine, which is actually going to create an environment for us where the good bacteria is gonna thrive, the bad bacteria can't live in this salt brine that we've created, and it's going to create lacto-fermentation, which is gonna help preserve the food and give us that acidic flavor that is very reminiscent of those pickled jalapenos. So I'm just gonna pour this in, and as I'm pouring, I wanna make sure that I'm um, going nice and slow so that air bubbles are getting a chance to kind of bubble up to the top. We want to eliminate the air in this environment too. Once we have it picked up, then I'm going to take my glass fermentation weight and then just set that on top and slowly push it down. Okay, great. Everything is submerged below our brine. That glass weight is going to hold everything in place. I'm just gonna put a lid on top of this and I'm gonna store it out on the counter for about one to two weeks. The fermentation needs to happen at room temperature, but you, if you do have a dark place that you can put it, that's ideal. So I'm gonna throw mine under this cabinet here and I'll check in on it and over the next few days and I'll show you what that looks like. We're back, it's been about two days, so let's check on the progress. All right, so as you can see, the green's a little more dull, the water's a little more cloudy, and you can start to see these CO2 air pockets, these air bubbles that are being trapped. That's when you know that the fermentation is actually working, and that's a really good sign. Where does that CO2 gas go? Well, it gets trapped up here, so every couple of days, especially in the beginning, you're going to need to burp it. How do you do that? Just twist. Ooh. As you can see, it's really active. You have a lot of air bubbles coming up. 
You're gonna to wanna to check back on this periodically, maybe every day or every other day, and actually try the jalapenos as you go, just to see how the acidity level is. And once you get it to your liking, it's done. You're then going to move it into the refrigerator where you can keep it for a year. I actually have a jar that I made last summer during the kind of peak of the growing season of the jalapeno. Uh, it's a rather big jar, but fermentation is a great way to enjoy foods throughout the year that may not be in season. Plus there's a lot of added health benefits. It's great for your gut. And who knows, maybe you'll make your partner happy next time you make a big plate of nachos. I hope you guys give this a try. It's delicious. Let me know how it goes. And then also let me know if there's something else you'd like me to ferment. There's so many different things out there. I'm gonna enjoy a little bit of this. So until next time, have a great one, everyone.